Australian-born Elton Mayo is best known for his role in the famous Hawthorne Studies at the Western Electric Company. The Hawthorne Studies were conducted in several stages between 1924 and 1932 at a Western Electric plant in Chicago. The first stage of the Hawthorne Studies investigated the effects of lighting levels and incentives on employee productivity in the relay test assembly room where workers took approximately a minute to put together a coil, an armature, contact springs, and insulators in a fixture and secure the parts by means of four machine screws. Two groups of six experienced female workers, five to do the work and one to supply the needed parts, were separated from the main part of the factory by a 10-foot partition and placed at standard workbenches with necessary parts and tools. Over the next five years, the experimenters introduced various levels and combinations of lighting, financial incentives, and rest pauses or work breaks to study the effect on productivity. Curiously, however, production levels increased whether the experimenters increased or decreased the lighting, paid workers based on individual production or group production, or increased or decreased the number and length of rest pauses. In fact, Mayo and his fellow researchers were surprised the production steadily increased from 2,400 relays per day at the beginning of the study to 3,000 relays per day five years later. The question was why? Mayo and his colleagues eventually concluded that two things accounted for the results. First, substantially more attention was paid to these workers than workers in the rest of the plant. Mayo wrote, Before every change of the program in the study, the group is consulted. Their comments are listened to and discussed. Sometimes their objections are allowed to negate a suggestion. The group unquestionably develops a sense of participation in the critical determinations and becomes something of a social unit. For years, the Hawthorne effect has been incorrectly defined as increasing productivity by paying more attention to workers. But it's simply not about more attention from management. The Hawthorne effect cannot be understood without giving equal importance to the social units, which become intensely cohesive groups. For the first time, human factors related to work were found to be more important than physical conditions or designs of the work. Together, the increased attention from management and the development of a cohesive work group led to significantly higher levels of job satisfaction and productivity. In short, the Hawthorne studies found that workers' feelings and attitudes affected their work. The next stage of the Hawthorne studies was conducted in the bank wiring room, where the group consisted of nine wiremen, three solderers, and two inspectors. Each of these groups performed a specific task and collaborated with the other two in completion of each unit of equipment. The task consisted of setting up the bank terminals side by side on frames, wiring the corresponding terminals from bank to bank, soldering the connections, and inspecting a test set of short circuits or breaks in the wire. The solderman serviced the work of three wiremen. While productivity increased in the relay test assembly room, no matter what the researchers did, productivity dropped in the bank wiring room. Again, the question was why. Mayo and his colleagues found that differences in performance were due to group dynamics. The workers in the bank wiring room had been an existing work group for some time and had already developed strong negative norms that governed their behavior. For instance, despite a group financial incentive for production, the group members decided that they would wire only 6,000 to 6,600 connections per day depending on the type of equipment they were wiring, well below the production goal of 7,300 connections that management had set for them. Individual workers who worked at a faster pace were socially ostracized from the group or binged, hit on the arm, until they slowed their work pace. Thus, the group's behavior was reminiscent of the soldiering that Taylor had observed. Mayo concluded, work was, or done, in accord with the group's conception of a day's work, that is, what succeeded only by the individual who was cordially disliked. In the end, the Hawthorne studies demonstrated that the workplace was more complex than previously thought, that workers were not just extensions of machines. 
by highlighting the critical role, positive or negative, that group, group norms, and group behavior play at work, Mayo strengthened Follett's point about coordination. Make just one change in an organization and others, some expected and some unexpected, will occur. Thanks to Mayo and his colleagues for their work on the Hawthorne studies. Managers better understand the effect that group social interactions, employee satisfaction, and attitudes had on individual and group performance. The Hawthorne effect showed that when management paid more attention to workers, productivity increased. But equal importance should be given to the social units or teams that were created, which demonstrated that human factors were more important than physical conditions or the work itself. 